Hello, it's Sarah. I am beading still, you guys. I wanted to share what I'm working on. It's um, stringing beads with silk. Um, this is kind of like a little mala that I made. It wasn't intended to go on my wrist, but I can roll it up over my wrist. Um, it's not stretchy. This is silk. Uh, this is going to be for my tassel. <clears throat> anyway, a mala is like, here's a directions that I got from somewhere. Like some beading company had this on their website. Um, sometimes known as a Buddhist rosary, this Tibetan necklace has been used for centuries by Buddhist monks to count their sutras um, or your mantras. If you have a mantra, you can just say, this one lady, I, I've been watching so many videos about this, you guys. Um, <clears throat> but the main thing I wanted to share with you is that I've been knotting uh, silk. So you could do this with pearls. Um, people knot pearls so that the, the pearls don't rub up against each other. Um, as you know, I've been using the elastic cord for my little bracelets. I'm wearing my Listen bracelet today. Um, and uh, I've used the wire. Um, it's like 19 strands and you use a crimp bead and everything like that. But I've never tried knotting. And Alexa, turn on my craft fan. I'm, having, I'm hot, you guys. It's a beautiful day today in South Jersey. Um, so yeah, so this was, I attempted, because to be honest with you, there isn't a full tutorial from start to finish that I could follow because some of them are trying to sell you a knotting tool that I don't want to use. Um, some of them have, uh, okay, there's something also called a guru bead. Okay, let me get this off here. So this basically is... I just ran out of thread. I, I got my thread at Michael's. I bought the Beadalon variety pack in the number six because the width of the thread really has to be around the same size. As the, so I'm using six millimeter beads, actually eight millimeter beads, I believe. Let me double check. Oh, these are six millimeter beads. Yeah, six millimeter beads. So a number six cord, it it comes to about 0.7 and the idea is that the hole it's compatible this was a bit tricky too to, to get a straight answer about but I did figure out that if I'm using I watched enough videos that finally someone said it if you're using a six millimeter bead that the hole and actually I googled it I googled it too the hole is going to be um, point between 0.7 and 0.8, like I have all these notes because I watched a million videos. Um, so a mala, a traditional mala, has 108 beads and they're generally um, knotted and you use each bead just like a rosary when you're saying a prayer, but you go, you pull, I think you pull it toward you. Actually, you don't you use this finger and this finger. There's a whole bunch of stuff involved that has to do with spirituality in a God way. So I think when I make mine, I am going to follow the traditional way. But just for today, I'm going to attempt to, because I didn't, I'm not using, um, this is amethyst. And I don't think this is any particular bead. I just loved the way they played together. So I will be making, um, an amethyst one and I have um, anyway I have that all set up but this one I thought would be gorge I went because Michaels just ended a sale it was 60% off all bead strands these are actually shell it says uh, light blue shell so kind of like um, I guess they crush up the shell and it's just made from the shell instead of glass beads it's made from shell and so were these these are amber shell six millimeter and they were just on sale and um, there were enough of them because you need 108. So I got those and then I thought I could throw a little howlite in there, some white. This is um, dyed white howlite, but they're all six millimeter. And using that, it's a lot of math, <laughs> but using a six millimeter bead, I should be able to get a full 
108 beads knotted in between each one with this much thread. I'm going to I'm going to tie these two together because using one of these was nowhere near enough. And then I ended up ordering from Beta Hall Leak too to get the uh, Griffin silk thread, but I did find this at Joann's today. I stopped. I went for my walk today and then I stopped at Joann's. I'm going to tie these together and um, I'll show you. I'm going to do it off camera first and then if it works, I'm going to come back and do a full tutorial of what's available in the craft stores for you to be able to complete a mala, a knotted mala. Um, so I'm going to be working on this one today. Also, it's traditional to have, um, so the guru bead is the bottom and that signifies the teacher. And then you just need 108 beads and you can put spacers. Um, you can put little, like I bought these wooden beads today because I thought I'd try a wooden one. And I, because the hole's much bigger of these, but there's a, there's 160 beads in here. So for really cheap, you could make yourself a wooden mala. And then I did buy these because the hole in here will fit my thread. So I'm going to have to put, um, an e-bead on either side of all my beads. So <clears throat> that's what I was going to do until I got home and then I realized that I had all these and that I could actually combine ropes. So for this one, I'm going to combine. This was in the beetle beetleon. They had different colors. I love the gray. I used gray for this and I ordered some more gray to do um, my amethyst one. But for this one, I'm going to combine this um, kind of like a peach color and this brown. So what I'm going to do, and it, you know, hopefully it'll be long enough. If it's not, I'm going to be super frustrated. Also, it, when you open it, it has a needle on the end already that's attached. And you're just supposed to give it a tug to kind of um, just get it loose, you know. So, And I haven't been doing this when I'm stringing my elastic beads and you're supposed to do it too. Just to go so that it won't be unstretched <laughs> um, before you go get it started. Okay, so I'm going to measure this because I have a pretty long um, <clears throat> sealable, um, this thing has a, let's see, it has I think 36 inches. So I'm going to measure this. Oh good, it's way longer than 36. So it's 36, 60, let's see, 36, 72, and then a little bit more, so 82. So a full length of this should be plenty because a mala usually is around 37 inches for 108 six millimeter beads. Trust me, I've, I've done a lot of research. It's very confusing at first, but that's why I'm gonna figure all this out and I'm gonna do a tutorial that's like from start to be finish. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie, cause what you do is you take a strand and you double it so that when you tie your knots, you, you don't have to do it that way. But that's the way I'm gonna do it because I've watched a lot of videos. So I'm gonna open my other um, beetle line. And if I was using white, like I just bought today, the white, I'm gonna tie together two of these and it'll just be white but this it's just going to be tan and like uh what is it? it looks like a peach color they're not naming it anything but um it'll look pretty like and it's just to tie knots with so it's not like um that big a deal i think a dark brown would really look pretty with this blue and brown uh, kind of like amber colors that i'm working with so there's a lot of thought that you have to put into it and then after you put your guru bead that's the speed at the at the bottom so you string all the beads and then you finish it off with your guru bead and then you put a tassel and the tassel represents like the roots there's different p things that you can and every knot you tie you tie with intention like it's a very cool thing I think they're getting popular because of yoga and meditation and in Al-Anon we're supposed to um, improve our conscious contact with God 
through prayer and meditation and I've never really prayed or meditated and so I want to try I want to try and um, really meditation is just what I do in this craft room I've told you like painting is a form of meditation okay babe is a form of meditation <clears throat> but I'm trying to <clears throat> I love having tools and things that you can hold in your hand that can set your intention and so it's just another way of incorporating what I love to do crafts with my spiritual journey that's where I'm headed with this right oh by the way so anyway I'm gonna take the end that is not that doesn't have the okay here it is that doesn't have the needle because there's a needle at the end and I'm gonna leave like six inches at least uh, let me go this way because I just, you know, um, six inches at least for at the end. So I'm going to start my mala from one end, go all the way around the neck part and then get back to here. And I'm so I need at least six inches to tie my um, and I'm just going to use this. Um, what is this called? Like uh, it's called something and I just can't think of the name of it. Anyway, um, I haven't decided if I'm going to use the blue or the brown for my tassel. And I could mix it. But I'm just, you know, I haven't decided. I had this on me. I had, this is kind of like, um, it's not really the official floss or whatever, but I just made this last night. Um, so, okay. I'm going to tie this at approximately, I'm going to go with 8 inches. And just do an overhand knot. Then I'm going to lay out um, kind of a pattern. There's a couple different patterns that they have. So there's, to make 108 beads, you can go 7, 14, 33, 33, 14, 7. So it comes back to like a pattern. That was one that I was going to do. You could just do four sets of 27 beads. 21, 33, 33, 21 and like I think 12 nines so anything that's divisible into 108 and that's the reason the 108 is a significant number because it has a lot of meaning in the in the universe that's if you google 108 you know it it'll come back with reasons like about the planets about our chakra and all that stuff so um there is a reason for it. There's also a wrist mala that you can make, and I probably will make that. Um, and I think I've seen them do it with stretchy cords, so I do like the idea of doing that. Um, so, I think I'm good to go. I am, so see, it's just, I have two needles now that I'm going to be able to load my mala up on these double strands. And it's nice and long. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to have success. <laughs> it was so disappointing. I knew it was too short. But um, anyway, so see, this will look pretty. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. So that's what I've been up to. Um, I, I did want to mention about the Guru Bead. So you can also buy the Guru Bead. It, it ends up that it's a, a bead. So I, I think I might use this tiger's eye um, bead for my guru bead on this piece if, if the strings fit and everything, which I think they should. Um, it has two, the regular hole going through the bead and then there's a hole at the bottom. So this is a special bead that is called a guru bead and um, I did just order some on Am or from Beadaholic. I got, uh, I'm going to make rose quartz mala but that one will have the traditional so I ordered these supposedly guru beads off Amazon and they came I ordered them last night and they came today and so the idea is that, that it's not a true guru bead so what I mean is it doesn't have three holes but it has it's an open work bead which is beautiful by the way so there's a hole at each end, and then it's open work. So I'll be able to put my needle down, and then, ooh, 
and then I don't know if it's going to be even like I might go in this way and come down but anyway and then you would string this part which I did it on this one just fine I mean it looks fine like it you know I went I just went in the top of it so I might do that too but what it does is it just hides the knots so I have like a bunch of knots there but I, I don't think it looks bad and so I'm just going to play with it these are all my beginner ones and you know it is what it is but so this isn't a true guru bead and then this part right here I forget what they called this but these to me just look like they're um a long uh not a, like a bead cap so in other words it would go down like this yeah and I mean I don't really love how it looks either I mean it, it looks pretty good I think I'm gonna do it like this and then um, if not they're just pretty beads anyway um, you put your tassel at the bottom of the guru bead so um, I did end up finding an actual guru bead on uh, be the holy cad them so I'll share all that when I get there but just for today and like see I pulled I, I tried to use what I have as much as I could so for this one I just had these big crystals so it worked just fine for that um, I have this one has a peace sign which I love I think I'm gonna give it a cleaning because um, I have like uh, you know a bead uh, silver cloth um, I was thinking of even putting this little lotus charm um, above the bead right so we'll see we'll see how it goes like it depends um, and that comes at the very end when I tie everything together so I have plenty of time also I was I have came across this little dragonfly charm that I had made and I was thinking that would look pretty kind of like hooked to my like just as an extra added thing hooked to the tassel as well so I'm going to be playing around with this today. Oh, I also wanted to show you guys, this is how my, my box turned out the last video. This has one coat of matte varnish and one coat of satin varnish. It's not as shiny as my other one that I did. And I did, I put a deck of cards in here just to see, like, because it does hold cards. Um, and so that's what that looks like doesn't really look shiny or anything but it's good it's finished and I have a lot of burning projects that I'm going to be working on I got a comment from one of you one of you guys wanting me to show from start to finish my process on mandalas so I have a big 14 inch mandala that I want to do so I have a lot of projects that I'm working on I just wanted to get this done and um, I'll be back all right you guys thanks for watching